Hey guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler-free review for Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. This was the book that this month was voted on by my Patreon supporters. Every month my Patreon supporters vote in a poll for a book that I will read and review, and this is the one for September. I almost said October. It's not October yet. This is a standalone little contemporary fantasy that follows a guy who dies? and gets taken to this like in-between sort of way station before he passes on. And there's like a little found family there of people that help people pass on and he falls in love with one of them and tries to figure out life and like the afterlife before he passes on fully to whatever the next stage is. As you guys know, I love between life and death stories. I love people who, you know, reapers and uh, things, people who couldn't like go between life and death or work with the dead or can see ghosts, all of that stuff is perfect. And this is very much like a cozy fantasy story. The risks here are not necessarily super high. It's a little bit of a slower story. There are some triggers in here though. Um, so there is obviously like death and things, but there's also the dealing with different kinds of death. So there is triggers in here for suicide, although it is not explicit that like methods of suicide are not talked about and there is murder in here as well. We even have discussions of like child death and death of animals and things, but it is dealt with in a uh, like very loving way. So first off, I'm gonna talk about our world building. I love a little in between life and death world. What's really cute about this is this takes place mostly in a tea shop. So there is this tea shop called Caron's Crossing. Uh, and everyone in like the real world can kind of see this because the two people that really run the shop, May, who is a reaper, and Hugo, who is a ferryman, who essentially like helps people cross over, uh, they are human and they like exist in the real world. And this is sort of like a cover for this little ghost house where people come temporarily before they pass on and go through the whispering door. And it's delightful. I love the way that TJ Klune does this like this fantasy bureaucracy thing. He did this with House in the Cerulean Sea. He's doing it here. Death has a bureaucracy. Death having a manager. There's like actually a character called the manager in here. Um, there being like, you know, you get a file and you have to go get this person and whatever, and there being like a system. I think the, the talking about it in that kind of way um, is just kind of funny, um, but also like this this discussion of sort of bureaucracy and dismantling that and things I think I don't know I just I like those dynamics and just like the ghost stuff um how ghosts sort of exist what they can and cannot do how someone would react to dying in a certain way all of that I really liked next I'm talking about our characters which are a mixed bag for me so our main character of Wallace is the worst the worst. Honestly, in my opinion, if you've read both House in the Cerulean Sea and this, they are not connected. Um, but I almost feel like you could, should have swapped the main characters in there because it would have made slightly more sense. So Wallace is the worst. He's a lawyer and he's like a horrible person, like categorically. And then he's really the worst for like the first half of the book. And then something happens where like he just sort of stops becoming the worst. And it's implied that it's gradual, but like it's not quite in the book, but then he just sort of starts being more okay, and that's when I started to like him and pull from him a bit more. Like it's very obvious that that's the way the story's gonna go, that this person who's awful, sort of Scrooge-like, right, turns into a person who's like slightly better after life, okay? That is very obvious from like what the story's gonna be. Um, but I just found a little bit of like the first parts of the story pretty unbelievable, because we have these characters who work at this way station being so nice and understanding, which is yes, part of their job, but then we have this sort of like budding romance element and I truly don't know what Hugo would have ever possibly seen in Wallace and he sees it from almost the beginning where he's like, you contain multitudes and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, he's awful. There is nothing really redeeming about him at the beginning. So what do you, sweet cinnamon bun, see in him besides just being like a cute manic pixie dream boy cinnamon bun? Uh, I don't know. I don't really, I don't really love that. But as far as the rest of the characters and like the little side characters and things, super cute. There's a ghost dog. There's just, again, all these like depictions of um, different kinds of death and how people would get through that and the difficulties there. And it's all, again, it's a very cozy story with nothing being super high stakes because these people are already dead. And just like the inevitability of how things are sort of going to go down and, and you know, what we learn and how we move on and, and what what is next kind of things. So yeah, the little found family of like the Reapers and the Ferrymen and everyone that is like in that little tea house area, super cute. Next, we talk about our plot. There is parts of this that are slow. Uh, again, it sort of meanders a little bit at the beginning with Wallace being awful, but time does pass here. Uh, and again, we have time for all this exploration of, again, child death murder, suicide, all of this, um, 
and in ways that feel contained but like personally suspenseful and yeah I just I just like what TJ Klum does with these kinds of things. The exploration of like different things is a bureaucracy and the way that he makes things um again sort of like cozy and uh work out in a way that is very satisfying. So yeah, I really liked this. As far as comparing it to House of the Cerulean Sea, they're two different things, um, but I liked like the atmosphere of this and the theming of this more than House of the Cerulean Sea, but the side characters of House of the Cerulean Sea I think I liked a little bit more, and both romances are similar. We always have this like curmudgeon character in a bureaucratic sort of environment fall for uh, a ball of sunshine and it's a Killian. Like that's what he writes. He has another book coming out I think next year that I will probably be interested in as well because it sounds like a similar vein of like what he does. But yeah, I like these. I think if you've liked his writing before you're probably gonna like this. I gave this I think four out of five stars. Solid. So comment below. Let me know what you thought of Under the Whispering Door. Thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye.